Hello my beautiful friends, it's Amanda here and today we're talking about some new palettes coming from Odin's Eye. These are part of the Jord's Divine Collection. Apologies if I pronounce that wrong. Swedish and Nordic languages in general are incredibly difficult to get the pronunciation and the accent correct if you haven't learned it from a young age. I learned this very early on in life because I have a lot of my close relatives who are Danish and um, they tried to teach us Danish and uh, it was really hard. Anyway, the Divine Collection is inspired by the Earth Goddess Jord. We're getting two 15 pan eyeshadow palettes. These are going to be priced at $35.90 US. That's $35.90 each. However, you will be able to use coupon codes on these. I do have an affiliate code. It's just my first name, Amanda, and that will save you 10% on pretty much everything on the Odin's Eye site. The only thing that's excluded are collaborations, but they do have some pretty good collaborations out right now. If you want to check those out. <laughs> These will be available on Saturday, May 20th at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you don't live in the Eastern Time Zone, then you might want to just give that a Google and see what time that is where you are. However, I believe that these are not super limited edition. I think these will be around for a while. Like the Alva and Freya and Soulmate collections were all around for a while and were restocked many times. So I don't think that this is a super rush type of thing. But you know, just in case you want to be there for the launch, we have the Jewels and Gem palette, which is this more cool tones, a really interesting mix of colors in here. We have a mauvey purple row, this more kind of grayish blue row, and then this one is almost like a greenish brown row, but this palette in particular has a lot of those offbeat neutral type of colors that I personally really, really enjoy and feel interested in. We also have the Stone and Rock palette, which is much more decidedly a green palette. It's the one I'm wearing on my eyes in today's video, and I did film this eye look, so I'm going to do a separate video with some eye looks tutorials for you. This one also has some of those what I call offbeat neutrals or unusual neutrals because this is like a stone, jewels, gems, stone and rock type of theme. There is some jewelry being offered on the site. Odin's Eye does do a lot of really cool accessory type of things, makeup bags and scarves and mirrors and brushes and stuff like that. Personally, I'm not really a fan of the jewelry in this collection. It's just sort of a personal taste thing. I also make my own jewelry on Etsy. So, you know, I just am pretty particular about things. Certainly there are a lot of people who are gonna love these pieces and enjoy them and find a lot of use for them. I'm just not really a fan of the styling. So I'm not really gonna dive into that. I don't really do jewelry reviews anyway. I'm just gonna focus on these two eyeshadow palettes. I'm going to give you a lot of information about these. We're going to do a close-up look at each palette, of course, finger and brush swatches. I also have a few comparisons for each one of these palettes. Not too many. These are pretty unique palettes, but I did want to give you a few comparisons. So let's start with some close-ups of these palettes. We're going to dive into the packaging. We'll talk about the different textures in here, and then we'll get to the swatches. So let's start with this stone and rock palette. That's the green palette. First up, we're looking at the outer packaging of the Stone and Rock palette. These palettes both have similar cover art, but just in different colorways, kind of mimicking the similar layout with different colored shadows inside. We see the beautiful goddess and the stone and rock all flying through the air around her and then opening up inside, there is a nice mirror in here and as usual, some detailing inside the palette as well. These do have little imprints on some of the matte shadows. You can check out my Instagram page if you want to see what these looked like before I started using them and swatching them. But those prints do wear off pretty quickly, especially because these mattes are very soft. We have eight 
true mattes and then seven different types of shimmers. You know me, I love a good even split between mattes and shimmers. As usual, Odin's Eye is bringing us a lot of different textures within these shimmers which is a lot more apparent once you see them all swatched and actually applied to the skin. So here I wanted to give you a look at the entire color story all together. These are just some quick finger swatches because I am gonna show you really in depth finger and brush swatches so that you can see the different applications. I wanted to show you the full color story all together. It's a little bit hard, at least for me, to envision that if I don't see them all next to each other side by side. And here you can really get an appreciation for the full color story. And you can also start to see the difference between some of the textures. They all apply so beautifully. We have buttery opaque mattes, but some of these shimmers have a more smooth foiled opacity. Some are more of a glittery sheer base type of topper like the very first Shimmer Frenzy, and some are sort of in between. Now you're going to see the individual rows swatched. These are very much laid out in rows, at least to me visually, that's how I'm perceiving it. So I wanted to show you each row together. On top are the finger swatches, and then directly below are the brush swatches. I don't use any primer. I don't dampen my brush. I just put the shadow straight onto my skin. And with any given swatch, I may go back with either the finger or the brush to smooth out the swatch, but I don't dip into the shadow multiple times. That way you can get an idea for how these perform with different application methods. Sometimes you can tell a difference. Often with Odin's Eye, you can't because their formula is so so consistent and these two palettes are no exception to that observation that i've made about the odin's eye formulas and the brand in general now let's dive into the jewels and gem palette the jewels and gem palette is a very very similar artwork to the stone and rock palette some of the extra jewels and gems flying around here are a little bit different but the most noticeable change is the colors here are a lot brighter, a lot more rainbowy, where the Stone and Rock palette definitely had a lot more of those earthy neutral tones. Otherwise, very similar, same mirror, same style of packaging, same layout. We even have the same dispersion of colors here with eight mattes and seven shimmers. One thing I just want to quickly mention here, because I am going to give these palettes a glowing review. The only thing that I don't like are the shade names. I think they are both redundant and repetitive. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry for my mom joke. I don't want to harp on this too much because I know that Odin's Eye is not an American brand. English is not their first language, so I don't want to give too hard of a time for the shade names. I try to give a balance. I try to give pros and cons for most things, and overall, I really, really love these palettes, this one in particular, but I just find the shade names to be a little odd. Now, with all that aside, look at these gorgeous shades. I love the mix of, of course, purples. I know I'm wearing green in the video, but let's be real. Purple is my favorite eyeshadow color. I love this mix of purples and cooler tones, which I've really been gravitating towards lately. All of these shiny, shiny, shifty colors, all of these beautiful textures, rich, deep, kind of jewel tone, cool tone colors. Everything about this just really works for me and intrigues me and feels like a daily staple type of color story for me. Formula-wise, Jewels and Gem is giving us the same consistent opacity, blendability that Stone and Rock and pretty much all of the Odin's Eye palettes give us. The duochrome shades in this palette are particularly duochroming for me, and I just really overall enjoy how these bright, 
shifty metallic shades are mixed in with some moodier and even grungier type of neutrals. And I mean, really, these are colors blue, purple, pink. These aren't really neutrals, but in this setting, it reads as a just off of neutral type of color story. I love that. I'm intrigued by it. I want to keep using it and experimenting with it. Now that you've seen the details on these two palettes and you've seen them swatched, let's take a look at a handful of comparisons. I don't have a ton of comparisons. These are honestly very unique palettes in my collection anyway. So we'll look at a couple of comparisons and then I'll wrap up all my thoughts at the end. This Kaleidos Sci-Fi Greens palette is the first thing that popped into my head when I opened up the Stone and Rock palette. And as you can see, the color story is very similar. It's not an exact dupe, but I would say close enough, especially considering that the Futurism palettes are being discontinued. Sci-Fi Greens is no longer available, but look at that matte black from Kaleidos. Okay, I'm getting distracted. The next is a follower request from my Instagram. This is the Melt Gemini palette. Another really good comparison. I would say these are similar color stories. Not a lot of one-to-one -one matches here, but overall pretty close. I do think that you're getting some similar looks out of these palettes, but Melt Gemini is a lot more warm neutral leaning. Half the palette is those warmer brown, golden brown type of colors. Last comparison for Stone and Rock is the Odin's Eye and Angelica Nikvist Hella palette. As a rule, I generally do not do comparisons for collaborations. Something about that just doesn't feel right to me. However, the Hella palette is discontinued, so I feel like it's okay. Again, sort of a similar feeling, but not a ton of one-to-one -one matches actual shadow-wise. Now we're moving over to the Jewels and Gem palette. The first thing that I pulled out here is the ColourPop Rock Candy Mega palette. Rock Candy is a little bit more on the nose, a little bit more standard basic neutral, but again, pretty similar color story. Rock Candy is the more basic version and Jewels and Gem is just a little bit more elevated, a little bit more extra and also the Odin's Eye formula is better. But anyway, moving on to the Huda Rose Quartz palette. This is more similar, I think, than the Rock Candy palette color story-wise. And it makes sense because I love the Huda Rose Quartz palette. And these two are more similar, more on par formula-wise as well. Rose Quartz is slightly more basic, not quite as offbeat, but overall, these are the most similar. I first saw these palettes in a photo. I did not see them in person. And when I saw the photo, I was like, oh, they're kind of boring. I have very much changed my mind on that. Now, I think these are so much more interesting in person especially once you actually get a feel, a literal feel for these shadows because Odin's Eye does textures so well. They have soft, super buttery mattes that are incredibly pigmented, but still really easy to blend and easy to work with. I think that their mattes are an absolutely standout matte formula. They always have a wide variety of textures. You get some super satiny metallics, some really more glittery metallics. Some are really sheer and more toppery. Some are really thick and super foily. There's always such a great variety of high performing textures. That's one of the things that made me fall in love with the Odin's Eye brand. And these are absolutely bringing the heat formula wise. Their packaging is always super beautiful and interesting and colorful and draws me in. I'm a sucker for a really unique colorful packaging and Odin's Eye always offers that up. If you know me, you know that purple and green are my two favorite eyeshadow colors to wear. Obviously, there's a lot to love for me in this green palette. I 
wear a lot of different shades of green, a lot of different tones of green. My collaboration palette with Odin's Eye has a bunch of different greens in it. And this is bringing more Odin's Eye formula green shadows into my life. And for that, I am thankful because I love all of those things. However, this is not my favorite of the two. I obviously will wear it, will love it, will cherish it, but this palette, the Jewels and Gem palette, this one in pictures did nothing for me. In person, it does everything for me. In person, it's a totally different story. This is such an interesting mix of colors. All of these shades work so well together. I didn't get it. It didn't really click for me until I saw it in person because in pictures it just looks very neutral. But using this has really brought to light how interesting these slightly offbeat neutrals are. Obviously we have this little pinky mauve row. That one's pretty straightforward. But these two rows are where it really gets interesting for me. This row here kind of has bluish slate colors, a super, super deep bluish purple, duochrome shades here. This one's like a greenish gold. This one is a brownish blue. And then down here, more of the same. We're seeing these blue leaning slate colors. We have a duochrome. We have this greenish gray. These are so interesting. I have just had so much fun playing with this using it, mixing these different shades together in an unexpected way that feels approachable and easy because it is really neutral, but it also feels fresh and different because it's not your standard browns, orangey tones. It's really giving me something different without giving me something that's difficult. And you know what? Odin's Eye does that so well. Another reason why I really love the brand is they always keep me interested. They're always doing something a little bit different. So didn't think I was going to like this at all. Now I absolutely love it. Both palettes are great performance wise, packaging wise, formula wise, color story wise. I really like both, but I think that this Jewels and Gem palette is just so unique, so interesting, and that's why it's my favorite of the two, and I think a lot of people are going to love this and find a place for it in their own personal makeup collections and really daily makeup routine. So don't forget to use my affiliate code, Amanda, at checkout if you decide to purchase either one of these palettes, and don't forget to check out my Flora Story palette on the Odin's Eye site if you're over there shopping anyway. It is in its final restock, so once it sells out, it is not going to be available ever again, and I really love it. That's it. I would love to hear what you think about these palettes. Are you picking either one of these up? Are you interested? Do you want to see some tutorials and eye looks using these? I always love to hear what you think about things too, so make sure you leave all your thoughts down in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Editing Amanda, you know what to do. Make this make sense. I don't know what I was doing there, but hopefully it made sense. <laughs> Probably not. I got distracted by my phone. We got this really high pony going on today, and she is a curly, curly girl. It's getting hot, so sunscreen and ponytails. That's my vibe. Okay, what was I talking about? Doing great. You're doing great. <laughs> I don't know why I keep doing tutorial videos. They do so badly. They perform so badly. People don't watch them and it really hurts my channel. But just keep doing it because I never learn. I mean, I like making them. It does kind of suck to put so much work into something that like makes my channel worse. Uh, it's fine. I'm fine. <laughs> Obviously, we have this little pinky mauvey road. Row, not road. <laughs> doing fine. What is Sozzle? I got my Merriam-Webster app. Oh, it means like drunk. Dang. We've got high intoxication and Sozzle. This has ecstasy, elatedness, elation, and exhilaration. I think they were a little Sozzled when they came up with those names. <laughs> Odin's eye, what are you doing? 
What are you doing? We shouldn't tease because English is not their first language. So I take it back. Fervor, frenzy, madness, elevated, high spirits. <laughs> Party with these palettes. <laughs> Did I order something from Amazon? Is that the Amazon guy? Oh, yes. Maggie's gonna go nuts, but. Okay, so you may not necessarily wanna take jewelry advice from me because I'm wearing um, trilobite earrings that I made for my Etsy shop. So maybe you will like the Odin's eye <laughs> jewelry more than I do. That's okay. It's just more cutesy. It feels a little bit young for me. I don't know. Maybe that's what's cool. I'm old now, so I'm not down with the cool kids. Maybe this is what the Gen Z cool kids are wearing. I'm old enough to have bought jewelry like this in store in Claire's. So... May not want to take my advice on what jewelry to wear. Although, you know what? I stand by my trilobite earrings. I think they're super cute. Thanks for hanging out, and I hope that you have a fantastic day. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you, and I'll see you real soon. Okay, love your face. Bye.